But what's going on, Call of Duty refugees? I don't know why I have a feeling, but I have a feeling that the homie Blame Truth is not gonna wanna like this video today. Yeah, this situation is gonna be crazy. Like the video if you just want a good game, man. Dislike the video if you want microtransactions, you want skill-based matchmaking, you want the cheaters in your game, and most importantly, you want the friendly I, I wanna know where you at. Uh, yeah, like if you don't want $20, $30, $100 microtransactions, bi-weekly then like the video i want to know where you guys at because here's the thing right a lot of people have said that the multiplayer is good maybe not you but generally speaking a lot of people are saying that it's good and i want to know if that opinion is still valid or not in terms of zombies yo a lot of people are like you know what i'm saying like a lot of people are like hey man like what the hell bro like what what y'all suckers did please say psych right now so yeah a lot of people are mad with zombies quite literally quite frankly uh, i also did not like the liberty balls map they showed a lot of people got blue balled but in terms of multiplayer i did enjoy my time with it for the amount of time i played right i i did i did i thought it was better than concord i thought it was better than dustborn so, you know, let's actually get into it. Shout out to the homie Nero Shenma. Roll it. What we're going to be doing today and in the coming days is doing a final review of the Black Ops 6 beta, basically discussing okay. the good and the bad and breaking that up into two separate videos. What okay. we're going to be doing here today is discussing the good aspects of the game, something that we don't really talk too much about here in the yeah. COD community, but things about the beta that I like, as well as my hopes for the future, knowing what we know about Black Ops 6 based on what was revealed. You already know the homie Blame Truth is not going to like this video, bro. <laughs> Yo, where is the homie yet, man? I have missed his videos, man. I miss his videos, man. We they call it the next, and so was what was officially know, marketed and officially teased via the blog posts and social media and things of that nature. I will say before we get into today's video that I am annoyed and frustrated at my own video quality right here because during the beta, I was having a lot of issues getting the game to run properly on my PC. So I was going back and forth between different settings and trying this and trying that and trying different yeah. ways of recording, different ways of streaming, different ways of doing everything essentially. And what ended up happening is I have like four hours worth of video files where it recorded my game and my stream quality. So there. Therefore, it's not that nice, crisp looking gameplay that typically you see here in the channel, but rather it's at a much lower bit rate, but it's the footage that I have. Therefore, it's the footage I have to use because it's not like I can go back and play the beta and redo it or anything like that. So no, that's, fine. That, that. That, that's fine, brother. That's fine. Like, yeah, it, it, it's fine. It's all right. But we just want to know, right? Because as Albert, Albert Einstein once said that no matter how good a Call of Duty title is, if it has skill based matchmaking, it is Shiza. So let's talk about that. That's the most important part. You know, we need to talk about that. That in advance. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and discuss the good aspects of the Black Ops 6 beta. First things first, we have the theme. I'm seeing lots of comparisons to Cold War Online, and honestly, I'm okay with that. Like, the game is a direct sequel to Black Ops Cold War. It's set just a few years in the future, and I think that Treyarch did a great job making a Black Ops game that was set in the 90s. Whether you look at maps like Rewind or looking into zombies on the map Liberty Falls, which people are not very happy about, but still, the 90s theme, the 90s aesthetic, I think it looks good. It I, I, I guess it's safe to say people People are not just not happy people are more than not just happy okay in other words like of course like we're not talking about that uh, a lot of people looking like this man like and people are bringing it up like four years four thousand <laughs> four years four years four thousand deaths and i think that's a, a rational take because yeah these seconds took four years but quite frankly i said it before i'll say it again man i did enjoy my time for whatever it was worth you know i was listening to youtube videos watching podcasts in the background and, and, and did, I, I i did enjoy my time playing the multiplayer like i you know what i'm trying to be optimistic too um and, and positive too right like i'm but not fake positive but i'm gonna be positive here and say that guys from what i played it was a lot better than concord okay make of that what you will but it was a lot better than concord and dustborn it was and that's a fact okay that's a fact and that's me being honest all right how about that let me know your thoughts as well but Quite literally, okay, jokes aside, sarcasm inside, <laughs> I, 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 aside, I did enjoy my time with multiplayer, but for zombies, man, I don't know, man. It's a direct sequel. It's meant to look similar to Cold War in some capacity. I also think the game is a stark contrast to the look and feel that we've had over the course of the last couple of years when it comes to Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. There are shades of inspiration from the Modern Warfare games, but having that difference in- No, there aren't just shades. There are full inspiration. The game feels and plays like Modern Warfare 2023, and like it feels like that Infinity Tard worked on it, and that's the biggest thing that I don't like about it. Uh, I wish it really, really was uh, the UI and all that was kind of different. I mean, the UI is different. It, it, they made it a little bit better this time. And, you know, shout out to them. But when I play the game, like, I look at the HUD. Uh, yeah, bro. Like, I, I, it feels like that because I did not buy Modern Warfare 3. So I'm assuming, like, this is a new map in Modern Warfare 3. That's how it feels like, of course. Like, I, I know it's Black Ops 6. Like, duh. But if I didn't know, I would be like, yeah, oh, wow. New map in uh, Black, uh, Modern Warfare 3. That's how it feels like. 
So for four years, uh, here's the thing though, let's actually do this real quick and then we're gonna actually hear all the points out. I have a feeling, uh, I, I have more than just a feeling that the homie Blame Trots is not gonna like this video, right? I enjoyed my time, I'll be honest, but does it feel like a four years game to you? Like a game that has been in development for four years? One in the comments, if yes. Two in the comments, if not, I'm gonna be honest, to me, it doesn't feel like that this game was in development for four years. It feels like that it was like a year and a half max, okay? Because back in the days, you know, Black Ops 2 was made in a year and a half, was way better. I get it different times, but like, but still, man, like, they have better technology now. Yeah, games might be harder to make now, but they also have better technology. So, yes, the technology has also been advancing. So, there is no excuse, man. Like, we're talking about AAA Studio, bro. We're talking AAA Studio. Yes, not quite literally a... Quite not like a quadruple A studio like Ubisoft, but uh, but triple A is still triple A, man. Triple A is considered the best out there, but right, let's get to it. In theme and aesthetic is going to go a long way, I think, for fans in terms of visual fatigue after having essentially the same game, looking the same way and having the same theme exactly. for the past two years. So I'm definitely exactly. a fan of the Black Ops vibe that I get from this game, the look and the feel of the game. That's pretty okay, awesome. Next he up here, we okay. have the weapons. Overall, the weapons are pretty unique within Black Ops 6. There's lots of guns that are going to be in the launch that we never saw in Call of Duty before. We saw some of those guns during the beta, but they're having a big emphasis this time on adding a bunch of different weapons and prototypes that we've never seen in the 20 year history of Call of Duty, which I think is a really cool thing. Obviously, we have our tried and true staples. The C9 is basically the MP5. We have the AK in there. We have the XM4. Like there's tried and true weapons in there, but there's also going to be a lot of variety in terms of what they're adding to the game. So yeah. I think that's a big positive. And I will say that balance got a lot better during weekend two and attachments make all weapons all feel all great all with all the updated gunsmith. I can't. So this is from what I'm getting. This is his uh, honest review. That's what he's calling it. Honest review. And this is like all the good stuff. And he said that he's gonna have a bad video like next so that's gonna be where the homie blame truth will like it okay ah, makes sense makes sense so he he's gonna be positive i cannot wait for that negative video man i cannot wait for the bad news video bro <laughs> i cannot wait for that i think that's gonna be crazy but uh, real quick i before i forget because i always forget i real quick want to shout out all the homies like froze 88 okay uh bruce uh, russell's ross uh Jonas, Oli Rishi, okay, Chris, a shout out to all of you for following over on Instagram. If you do have an Instagram, I would definitely love to have you there. Links are always in the description and in the pinned comment. All right, let's get back to it, boo boo say enough good about the changes they made to gunsmith like it actually feels good to put an attachment on my gun because the attachment pretty much just makes the gun better it's very rare that you add an attachment that gives you a downside and even when there is a downside it's not usually that crazy like for example being able to put a hundred round mag on an xm4 with really no downsides was a lot of fun during the beta i thought that was cool and i started to notice a lot more yeah, I, I also you know what that's actually a good point i do agree with this one although i have not tried the hundred mag and maybe i have not unlocked it or maybe i did but Deep down, I was still still thinking it would lower my mobility down. So be, because uh, that's that's that has been one of the biggest criticism by mostly everybody that bruh, like when we put attachments, we should feel like our weapons are getting better. But it's the opposite, right? Like you, that's why there are people that make like n naked gun attachments. B means that like naked gun means like uh, no attachment, right? They make their naked gun setups, right? Like no attachments whatsoever. So they, they can move faster and they can go they can they can play better, right? Because the more attachments you put on your weapon, you become slow and you you feel it, it's almost as though you feel like a Concord player, right? Like yeah. This is how you feel like when you have attachments in Call of Duty nowadays, but this time I gotta give them credit. Uh, the the amount of attachments that I tried, it felt like that I was still good in the hood, right? I was still like rolling around. So that was good. That that's good. That's good. That's good. Or variety in the builds and the different things that you can do with the weapons in the game. And I have a feeling that at launch things are just gonna get even crazier and there's gonna be a lot of crazy combos. And overall, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Uh -huh. The oh, time to kill fair, started fair. to feel much better as the beta went on. Initially, it felt like you were getting melted all the time, which a lot of that was like server desync and issues of that nature. But at the same time, the jackal was nerfed. And I'm not even entirely positive if it was just the jackal being nerfed or if it was the community, especially during weekend two, finally trying out some new things because we had access to more weapons. We had double weapon XP, therefore people could level up their guns even more. There's a lot more variety during weekend two and i think that is something we can expect to extend into the launch of the game when people start leveling up unlocking more guns and working on their camo challenges overall the weapons felt good they were varied and we do know at launch there's gonna be a lot of camo challenges and you're going to be able to work on them right away as compared to having to level up your gun first it's gonna be sweaty it's gonna be sweaty but i i personally i didn't have any problem with the time to kill i didn't even notice it meaning like i don't think it's bad or I think it's good. I think it's good. That's why I didn't notice it or I didn't like even thought about talking about it because it feels, uh, for me, it feels like very good. Time to kill feels very good. Uh, and overall, I did enjoy my time, the amount of time I played. Maybe, yeah, like uh, probably honeymoon phase. I'm not sure. So far, I have not pre ordered the game though. I was looking to get it. 
because of zombies because I saw the first map and you you already know like I made a reaction to that of course uh, and, and everybody reaction was positive mine was a, as well positive because the map felt good ever since we've seen the real gameplay no, I'm, I'm gonna stay back, okay? I'm gonna still wait a little bit. If they show us, like, more stuff for zombies and it looks good, then I might go ahead and pre-order and buy. I mean, there's no reason to pre-order now that the beta is gone. I didn't pre-order then. Why would I? I would just, like, get the game, uh, like, a day or two before, right? Like, pre-order the game a day or two before uh, instead, that's much better. So you get to download if you're getting it digitally or physical. I mean, get it day one, right? Don't give them your money. That's that's where I'm at personally. You don't have to like do what I do or what other people do. You are your own person, ladies and gentlemen. Damn, man. As Logan Paul once told Jake Paul, you are your own person, all right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so you gotta be your own person, man. But but ever since I've seen zombies, I'm not. I, I don't think I'll pre-order. What I'm thinking about right now is that I'll wait till I get to see DLC one zombies map, and if that is good, I'll just buy it instantly then, right? Or if they show me like more gameplay, if they drop more gameplay, I feel like that they're gonna drop more trailers and gameplay. And if that looks good and it turns out to be good, then yeah, probably because there there are also leaks going around that they will have legacy features, uh, like old school zombies. You heard that? Like, they're gonna bring completely, like, old-school zombies uh, mode in zombies. If that's real and we get to see it, then, of course, I'll, I'll get the game, right? And if that's good, that's good. Otherwise, I think I'll probably skip on it just like last year, though. Yeah, I skipped it last year. I might skip it. But but you know what? Like, I, I don't mind if any of you guys... You guys love it. You guys wanna buy it? Yeah, go for it. I'll just watch you guys' gameplay, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's perfectly fine, bro. I'll just pretend that I'm playing the game as well and I'm participating as well. I'll get myself a participation ribbon just like how Activision loves to give participation ribbons to all the people uh, with skill-based matchmaking, right? Yeah, well, well, well yeah, let's, um, yeah, I, I ain't even mad, I ain't even upset, like, they, I mean, I'm kind of upset with how they, they did, what they did with zombies, though, but right now, I'm like, hey, I accept it, bro, I accept it, it's not gonna be like the good old days, bro. It's over. First, it's to over. then unlock your challenges right there from the get. Your challenges for your camos will be there when your weapon's at level one. So that's also a very big positive. When it comes to oh. the perks in the game, Weekend 2 added a lot more perks, which made the game feel a lot better because Weekend 1 was essentially just everybody using the Jackal and using the red perks, right? That was pretty much it. But during Weekend 2, we got a level cap of 30. Therefore, we had more perks unlocked. And when the full game comes out, level cap is going to be 55. Therefore, we're going to see a lot more perks <laughs> being added in the full launch of the game. And I imagine there's going to be a lot of variety there. The combat specialties are an interesting twist. I'm not sure how amazing they are or how they're going to play out long term because we haven't seen every perk and every combination as of right now, but there's definitely room for some interesting things to happen. Like I said, during Weekend 1, the Enforcer perks were pretty much mandatory, but in Weekend 2, with the addition of more perks, we got a lot more variety. And my personal favorite build right here, I mean, this was freaking fantastic. So I was using the green perks where I was able to combo Flak Jacket and Tack Mask. I love being able to do that. Then I was using Bankroll, which gives you a bonus to your starting score streaks. So basically spawn in every life with already 150 score towards your score streaks. And then the other perk, I think it's called Dispatcher or something like that. I forget the exact name of it. Forgive me, guys. But basically what it does is it gives you a bonus towards your non-lethal score streaks and with the combat specialty that we have essentially this setup right here makes it incredibly easy to get uavs and counter uavs and also oh, gives geez. you a lot more bonus score towards your score okay so that's good to know because like that this was one of the biggest complaint that uh streaks feels like even to get a uav it's hard even to get like a normal predator missile something like that it, it's uh getting ridiculous to the point where you need a lot of points a lot of kills to get it right and, and streaks used to be like massive back in the days right they used to be op all the time and now it feels like that they don't like the streaks man like come on man like people love like call of duty players love the streaks people love suckers love to go after the streaks and they have nerfed the streaks down like crazy and this year is no different maybe they're gonna buff it in the final game and i hope they do because that was one of the biggest criticism and i think this is probably gonna talk about it in his uh, bad <laughs> uh, negative review video Score maybe. streaks if you're playing the objective, destroying enemy score streaks, destroying enemy equipment, whether that's going to be a gas mine on the ground or maybe an ammo pack or whatever, you get a bunch of bonus score for that, which makes earning your score streaks a lot easier. I think I got something <laughs> close <laughs> to a five kill streak and I got a chopper gunner because I was playing the objective and destroying things and messing around oh, with all sheesh. that stuff. So it was a really oh, cool combo. Obviously, the red perks are very good, having dung ho, having dexterity, having the combat specialty bonus, which gives you movement speed as well as health regeneration buffs. Like that's all good. But the green oh, then I will always rock that perk if that's the case, bro. How many kills he said he got to be able to get that? 
Five. I heard five, but I could be wrong. Could perks be wrong. are also very good. I and the blue five. perks, the recon perks, they seem to be the weakest, in my opinion. Like, the combat specialty bonus where you see people through walls when you spawn in. Some argue that's like OP. I can't believe they're adding wall hacks to the game. But how often is it really all that helpful? Like, most of the time when you're playing Domination, you're going to spawn away from the other team. At least that's the theory. Spawns were not exactly great during the beta. But in theory, you're supposed to spawn away from the opposing team. And yeah, you might know if there's somebody about to rush you in your spawn. But overall, if you compare that ability to the ability to really get your score streaks very easily or be able to have yeah. faster movement speed and faster health regeneration, I'm not sure how guys I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna lie that's my first time seeing like I feel like that's my first time seeing that attack chopper in black ops 6 bro it has been really this bad to the point where because I don't see anybody using streaks I mean of course I've seen people like the enemy's team use it but I have not seen like the first person gameplay first person view gameplay of the attack chopper I've seen like in my own games when I was playing the beta like the enemy team would have it but I personally never got it and I didn't <laughs> I didn't see other youtubers even get it though perhaps they got it but I have not seen like everybody's gameplay or perhaps I seen it but I don't remember so now it, it just feels fresh to me I don't know why it feels fresh to me it's been years since that crap good you know? it is but it's kind of balanced by the fact that the blue perks are arguably some of the strongest in the game you have choices like ghost and ninja in there forward intel is very good as well by giving you more minimap awareness like the blue perks are very powerful i'm just not sure how powerful the wall hack aspect of the perk build is but regardless i'm curious to see what other perks are going to be added to the game in the full launch and how people he's talking about like the the in-game wall hacks not like the, the 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 youtubers and the content creators the streamers the cheaters uh use right like the <laughs> You know, like the tick tick ticks and cheat in the game, those kind of wall hacks crazy. You know, the rectangular boxes, he's not talking about that. He's talking about like the legit in-game uh, wall hacks <laughs> where you would get a perk and you would be able to see the enemy equipment on the other side. Yeah, that's the one. So don't get mistaken for something else, fellers. We're going to mess around with their setups and everything because almost, I might be wrong here, but almost it seems like it's kind of mandatory that you pick one of these specialty bonuses, whether it's going to be the red one, the green one, or the blue one. You probably want one of them, right? Which kind of makes you build your perks in a certain way to be able to get that bonus there, which kind of doesn't give you a ton of variety overall. There might be ways where you can use things like Dead Silence, maybe throw on Flash Jacket, maybe throw on this or that or the other and not get a combat specialty just because you want the base power of those perks. But I'm curious to see how it's going to play out long term. <laughs> the perk system is a revamp like we've seen in a lot of Call of Duty games recently. They kind of change things up. That's good to know. And uh, honestly, Honestly, I cannot wait for his bad news video, man. Check out this video on the screen, man. This is the last video that we've done. If you've already seen it, then you can watch the video on the left, but I highly advise you don't watch the video on the left. Crazy drama, man. Crazy drama. Do not, whatever you do, do not watch the video on the left, guys. Just watch the video on the right, all right? And I'll see you right there.